So a big uh, uprising came. They come into town like, woo, it's Naomi, check it out, check it out. She's coming back. Yeah, she's been gone for all this time, right? So there's a big thing going on, right? So Naomi returned, and Ruth to the Moabites, her daughter-in-law, and her who returned from the country of the Moab, okay? Now they came to Bethlehem at the beginning of barley harvest. Everybody say barley harvest. Okay. Now this is the thing. This is what I talked about a couple weeks ago. This time and chance happens to them all. There's something going on here. God is definitely setting them up for favor. Okay? The whole thing about it is, and this is the way God works. God's constantly setting us up for favor. It's this one thing always being tenanted and submitted to what he has are we really listening are we still going over here to the side of condemnation are we still listening to the old way feeling condemned every day let me repent again today let me lord i'm sorry i failed you again or we live in a life understanding that we are free in christ that god has set us free once and for all are you understanding when you understand that and get that calm, calm your mind will begin to rest on the things of god you will find your place in god and be able to rest in him you understand what the, that body did what, when he hung on that cross, okay? So now we are free from all sin. It has no power, no dominion over us. Why do we constantly remind ourselves about it? Are you understand? So we're, so we're basically not agreeing with the word of God. I'll tell you why, because we've had these doctrines for so long. The preaching grace through the lens of the right. Enough to keep us tripped up so we don't get the full inheritance. We don't get everything. This is what I love about little Ruth. And, she's, and, and, and she deflects, she's a parallel, she's, a, she's, a, a, she's likened unto the bride of Christ. Amen? Boaz is a type of Jesus. Okay? Okay? There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth. Everybody say great wealth. Great wealth. Of the family of Elimelech. Okay? And his name was Boaz. Boaz, which means what? In him is strength, in him is power. Okay? You guys feeling it already? I'm telling you what. This is going to be exciting. I just pray that the Lord just gives me the wisdom to get this through. So Ruth, the, <clears throat> the Moabitess, Moabitess, and uh, said to Naomi, please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain <clears throat> after him in whose sight I might find favor. Okay? Are you hearing this? I'm going to read a little bit more and we're going to go back. And she said to her, go, my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers, and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Let me tell you. Go ahead and get to the next frame. Let me see what I have for my notes here. Okay. Okay, so here we are. Ruth 2.2. She confessed favor before she went to the field. Now look. This is chapter 2, verse 2. So Ruth, the Moabitess, said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain. After him, in whose sight I might find favor. Are you hearing this? So the first thing she did, she confessed favor before she went into the field. Before she ever even took off, she began to confess. Everybody say confess. Yes. Okay? What you set your mind, out of the abundance of the heart and the mouth speaks. Let me tell you what, man. We've got to retrain our minds to know that we are children of favor and of great blessing. You understand? And I'll tell you, when you start getting this, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Somebody is going to come along and say, no, wait a minute here. And they're going to try to get you right back under that yoke of condemnation. They're going to preach a condemnation message right back into you. They're going to get you to get out of the truth in God, which Christ. Jesus Christ came in grace and truth. In him is the truth. In him is the grace. And I'm telling you, once you understand his grace, then and then alone will you know the truth. You have a truth, the truth, because it's the word of God. It can't change. It changes not. It is the truth, but are you walking in the fullness of the truth? Are you? Are we? That's where we need to be, amen? Okay, number two, she confessed favor before she left her house, okay? So before she went to the field, she confessed. Before she left her house, I mean, she's in her house. I confess favor. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm going to get that job. I confess favor, Father. On my way, I'm confessing favor the whole way, God, for it's your good pleasure to give me favor, to give me the things, Father, Lord God. You understand? Because we need jobs. We need, she needed a job. You got to understand, this is a Moabite. Do you understand what the Moabites did to the children of Israel in Numbers, what is it, 21 and verse 9? You know, there was a curse on them 
to 10 generations because they did not give the children of Israel bread or water when they came and asked for it. So God says, cursed will be the Moabites for 10 generations. You give them nothing. You understand? So you got to understand, this is a Moabite woman. Ruth was a Moabite. A Moabitess. We just read it. Understand? She's a foreigner. Everybody say foreigner. Foreigner. Ooh, there's a lot in that. Let me tell you what. Now, if you understand gleaning, there's a law back then. It says whenever you you go and harvest, okay, when you're harvesting your barley, okay, that the law said that you can't harvest at all. Whatever you drop, you leave on the ground. You know what I'm talking about. You guys know this teaching pretty good. For those those who don't know, that was a law. It It was a law of the land. So if you drop something, it stayed. And that could speak a lot of words to a lot of us. And if, if you, if you miss hitting some things, leave it. You're supposed to leave it for whom? The poor and the stranger. That's why you leave them. That's your alms. That's your offering. You understand? You leave it for both. The poor, okay? We don't do that a lot of times. See, we call it waste. If we, our kids don't eat all our chicken McNuggets, so we go, well, you're wasting it. I might as well eat it. But you're already full. But you're already full. But you're going to eat it because you think it's waste. God doesn't call it waste. You understand? What we perceive as waste, God doesn't because it's favor. I know that's probably not the best analogy of it, but it's exactly it. Okay? You guys ready to move on? Okay? Then she confessed his favor in the spite of the fact that she was poor. She was poor. I mean, dirt poor. I had nothing. You understand? I mean, there, when you don't have a man, you have nobody to take care of you. You are poor. So here they are. She confessed favor, though she was under the curse of the law, Deuteronomy 23, 3 through 6. That's what it was. Okay? 23, 3 through 6. I was thinking of another scripture, which is talking about the bronze serpent, which we may get to, and that's in 21, 9 of Numbers. Okay? Then she confessed favor in the sight of the field of Boaz. Okay? So let's get to that. I just want you to have that. I want you to get these things in your mind. I want you to permeate these in your mind. So everybody say favor. Okay, there you go. I want that to be your word every day. I want you to wake up in the morning and say, Father, I have favor in your sight. Lord, no matter what goes on, I have favor in your sight, Father. Your desire is the favor to bless me, to give me a good life. For you came to give me life, life more abundantly, not to condemn my life, not to hold me back, to give me all things. God will hold nothing from his children. But we've been taught that he will because we're not holy enough. We're not pure enough. We're good. If you are born again, you are, then they'll use that whole Romans 8 and pervert it. I said that before you guys got in here. For there's no condemnation for those who walk after the Spirit. Not the flesh. You're walking after the flesh. I've seen you. I've seen you at uh, a club. How do you know I was at the club unless you're in the parking lot? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You're walking after the flesh. Now, I've taught that to a degree. Not to be condemnation like that. But I said, you know, I, well, you know, old Bob over there is not doing so good in his life because I know he's not really living in the Spirit like he should. He's probably not t- praying in tongues. He's not praying enough. He's not reading the Word enough. Ooh, that's enough condemnation to stop your flow of anything. Come on, that's condemnation. That is condemnation. See, our minds will go, no, wait a minute, Pastor, but you know the Bible says, be holy for he is holy without holiness, no one see the Lord. Right, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Nothing you can do to obtain it. You want to try to get in your own righteousness? Go ahead. It won't happen. That's the law. That's the law, and you won't do it. You'll never be able to do it. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. The law came from Moses. Which one do you want to serve? Do you want to try both? I even heard, I, I, I preached this without even realizing that, you know, we call it, we call it, well, we call it balance. And when we, you know, we, we talk about crucifying our flesh and all this stuff. We call it balance. God calls it mixture. You can't mix them. And that's what Paul was saying, oh, this wretched man I am. He was trying to say, look, man, you've got to serve one or the other. If you're going to try to be in the flesh, serve the flesh. You understand? Serve the law. Learn, and obey the law. Do your best. You can't do it, but do your best. Oh, this wretched man I am. I want to do this. I want to, why do I do the things I hate, but I don't do the things that I want to do? He's, he was displaying. That wasn't him. He had no problem with that. He done got knocked off the horse, got full of the Holy Ghost. He wasn't bound, trust me. He was not bound by this time, I guarantee you. Because he, he says, I speak all these things concerning the law. But people want to read into the Word of God whatever they want to read in because they don't study it out. They don't search it out. Amen? Amen? Before you open your mouth, you better do a little bit of studying. I don't mean for the sake of studying, but you, the Bible says to rightly divide the Word of God. Yeah. Right? Rightly dividing the word of, word of truth. I said the Word of truth. This Word is truth. You better divide and, and not forget neglect the whole counsel of God. Now, the whole counsel of God, I can go back to this and you can find favor. A lot of people didn't realize favor and grace. Grace has been in the Old Testament since, since the time has begun. It's just that not everybody had a revelation back then because they had the law. They couldn't understand it. 
But there's a one, this woman could understand it. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. So she's saying in the realm of the flesh, come on. Though we walk in the flesh, we don't war according to the flesh. Let me tell you something. You understand grace. You understand favor, even though we're walking in the flesh. We haven't come to the full resurrection of our body in Christ yet. The perfect hasn't come. But I guarantee you we can walk. I guarantee you we can walk just like Jesus walked on this earth. If you really want to, we cop out because of condemnation teaching. I'm not saying as holy and pure, but I am saying as holy and pure. You're like, what? What I'm saying is it, it, it's work, the, the finished, completed work of the cross. We are holy and pure. We are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. We are. We don't have to obtain it. We are. He didn't go, it is almost done. He cried out at 3 p.m. evening time, it is finished. It's done. The work you've given me, I have completed. Everything's been fulfilled in Christ. Everything. It's done. Grace and truth. Grace and truth. You have Jesus in you, guess what you have in you? Grace and truth. What are you listening to? We've had a bunch of condemnation teaching, I'm telling you. Bad doctrine. It sounded good. I believed it. I thought, yeah, I bet I better get on the blood every day. No, he made it for once and all. Once and for all. All means all. He did it once and all. Just go there. You guys know that. I teach it enough. But we're going to keep hearing it over and over until we're all set free and we're walking in the favor of God. Amen. I'm not trying to overdrive it, but I want to make, make sure we're making sense because I don't have the slightest idea what's going to pop up next. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. So we got that, right? So she found favor, right? She confessed it before she went to the field. She confessed it before she left her house. She confessed it even though th- th- in spite of the fact she was poor. Come on. Is this starting to hit home yet? And the fact she was poor. Because we've been taught improperly, you know what I'm saying? Keeping us down, keeping us oppressed. <sighs> she confessed favor, though she was under the, the, the curse of the law, which God pronounced over her life. She didn't care. She understood grace and favor. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened. This is, this is chapter 2, verse 3. Then, okay, listen. And she happened. Time and chance is working on her side right now. Because that word happen is from the, from the old King James Version uh, word to happen. Let me, do I have it up there? Hit it. Let me see if I put it up there. Okay, the law says I will visit your sins even to the third and fourth generation. But grace, now this is what grace said to her. But grace, this is what grace says to us. But through grace, God says, I will I will by no means remember your sin anymore. Okay, we know that. We know that's Hebrews, right? Okay? The law demands righteousness, but grace supplies righteousness as a gift. Okay, so we're righteous of God. Ruth did not depend on the law. The law would have condemned her. She depended on the grace and the favor of God. The law condemns us, every one of us. Your sin is always evident in your life. And then I'll get that thing. David, my sins are ever before your face. Law, we've been free. He didn't have, oh, but he had the spirit. I don't know, brother. I think he had the spirit of God. No, 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 no. no. Then you don't know your Bible. The spirit of God came upon David. The spirit of God came upon David. Upon, not within, upon. Now the candle of the Lord, and what he's the light of the world, the light was in all men since the beginning. Yeah, we know that. Because a lot of God, because God is always, always, in other words, God has always made us known that God is known. That's, that's in Hebrews too. I'm not, I mean, uh, Romans, I'm not going that. We've always, God makes it known to every man that he exists. I think it's Romans 1.13 that he exists. He is God. Every man knows. Every man knows. Trust me, they know. That's why they, they, but they end up worshiping foreign gods. You understand? It's easier. 